An ecosystem is a community of biotic things and their abiotic surroundings. The rainforest. Rainforests encompass 6% of the world's land area and are found near the equator between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Four main characteristics. Very high annual rainfall, high average temperatures, nutrient poor soil, and high levels of biodiversity. Biodiversity is the variety of plant and animal life in the world or in a particular habitat. A high level of biodiversity is considered important and desirable. You can see in this food web, there are four main trophic levels. The producers which use photosynthesis to create their own source of energy. The primary consumers, these are various herbivores as well as some omnivores that feed on the producers. The secondary consumers who feed on the producers and the primary consumers. And finally, the tertiary consumers. These species feed on the lower consumers. These are not the only organisms that play a role in the food web. They are also the detrivores. This group consists of bacteria and fungi, and they decompose plant and animal matter, adding nutrients to the ground. When living organisms eat one another, they take the stored energy in the cells and tissue. Only 10% of the energy gets passed on and the rest is transformed into movement or stored again as the organism grows. There are many biotic and abiotic factors that contribute to the rainforest ecosystem and biodiversity. Abiotic factors directly impact how organisms survive. These factors are related to each other and if one factor is changed or removed, it can affect the entire ecosystems. Biogeochemical cycles link biotic and abiotic things all together. Some examples of biogeochemical cycles include the nitrogen cycle, the water cycle and the carbon cycle. Rainforests are the net absorbers of carbon dioxide, which overall protects the earth from the greenhouse effect. The function of the rainforest in the water cycle is to add moisture to the atmosphere through the process of transpiration. When rainforests are cut down, this significantly impacts the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and rainfall declines, sometimes leading to drought. Biodiversity plays a major role in not only the food web, but it is also vital for the sustainability of our earth. High biodiversity, like their own rainforest, mean, means there is a greater variety of crops and a better response to natural disasters. Vegetation on earth plays a part in the biodiversity cycle. It ensures fresh drinking water and can also provide resistance against flooding by acting as a buffer. High biodiversity allows for complex food webs. This means there is a natural population control. When there is such decline in either the predator or prey in a food web, this can bring drastic change in the overall functioning of an ecosystem. Imbalance of the food web can occur due, due to natural or human impacts. Sadly, many rainforests are now dying out because of human impact. Deforestation, however, undermines this carbon sink function. Deforestation also affects the water cycle. Because without trees, water is not as easily precipitated. If rainforests are cleared, the soil rapidly becomes inhospitable for growth, eliminating the producers. This is where biodiversity is so essential to the survival of an ecosystem. If one food source is removed, then there will be an upset in the food web. However, the ecosystem would recover as there are still remaining energy sources for the other organisms, proving that biodiversity is a key to to ecosystems' ability to adapt. Although biodiversity is able to assist in the regeneration of rainforests, there however becomes a point where an ecosystem is damaged so much by human impact that it cannot recover. This is something we as humans should never let happen. The diversity of plant and animal species found among the Earth's ecosystems is astounding. The reef ecosystem shows no exception to this diversity of wonderful biotic and abiotic factors. Although these beautiful ecosystems are flourishing now, 
If human impact on these areas increases, the future sustainability of the Earth's wonderful environment will be negatively impacted. The reef ecosystem is a diverse underwater habitat teeming with a diversity of animals and plants. The most essential plant in the reef's ecosystem is coral. Coral houses many of the reef's small inhabitants including sponges, fish and crustaceans. Reefs are only found in the tropical and semi-tropical areas of the world. As the reef has such a diverse bio network of different species, many abiotic and biotic factors interact with each other to maintain a healthy ecosystem. The water contains many abiotic factors including water density, salts and gases. Other abiotic factors that are found within most ecosystems are sunlight and temperature. Whilst one biotic and abiotic factor within a reef ecosystem can interact with one another, there are also many other species that will interact or depend on that same abiotic factor. When speaking about how biotic factors interact, we talk about a food web. A food web is a graphical model showing the interconnecting food chains in an ecological community. Mariah Victoria, a former biology researcher. The coral reef has a very complex food web filled with many interactions. Each species is dependent on another. There are sizable amounts of producers as to keep this chain balanced, and at the other end of the scale, there are fewer apex predators. Similarly, there is an energy chain to describe how energy is used in its path through an ecosystem. The term biogeochemical refers to each of the cycles in reference to biology, geology and chemistry. Coral reefs play an important role in the biogeochemical cycles, especially the carbon cycle, explained by a researcher at ESSEA. The reef, specifically coral, takes carbon dioxide from the water and uses it to create hard skeletons for itself. Therefore, the carbon cycle is both beneficial for the earth, as the reef becomes a sink for the world's carbon dioxide, and for the reef's coral, as it gains protection. These corals enormously enhance the biodiversity of the reef. There are many reasons as to why biodiversity in an ecosystem is essential. Firstly, there is more natural stability for the different animals and plants, and furthermore, biodiverse ecosystems are able to withstand and recover from external changes easier. A reef ecosystem also has specific reasons as to why biodiversity is important. Primarily, a biodiverse reef ecosystem is able to withstand, recover, and adapt to impacts and stress much easier, and also because reefs provide important resources for many industries, and with a low biodiversity, many industries would fail due to the loss of balance of the reef's food chain. All ecosystems respond and adapt to change differently. Some of these changes include floods, fire, drought or human impact. The main reason that a reef ecosystem is able to remain so strong after an external change is due to its large biodiversity. A study shows that a high degree of biodiversity under stress during change is especially important to maintain an ecosystem, says Stoodle's PhD supervisor Michael Kessler. When responding to external changes, the reef environment uses its biodiversity to uphold its ecosystem. Ecosystems that are healthy because of biodiversity will bounce back, Dominie House, Professor in National Disaster Geography, says. Some ecosystems are negatively impacted by these external changes. However, there are also some other ecosystems that need these changes to occur to be able to flourish. Ecosystems undergo many external changes which can link to long-term impacts on the biodiversity and the future of the environment. The changes can also impact the future sustainability of a specific ecosystem and on a larger scale, the world. We need to ensure that ecosystems can remain biodiverse so that they are able to withstand change and impacts easier. It is also imperative that we lessen human impact on all of the ecosystems, as even when they are very diverse, it can be hard to withstand such strong negative impact. So, what is biodiversity? Well, it's simply the variety of living plants, animals and microorganisms living within an ecosystem. Biodiversity is explored through three different areas including genetic, species and ecosystem biodiversity. Genetic diversity is basically the genes within a species and the greater this is, the better chance of avoiding inherited diseases and increasing long-term survival. Species diversity also leads to a more sustainable ecosystem. For example, having a larger number of plant species means a greater variety of crops. Finally, ecosystem diversity is when an area contains numerous ecosystems, which will in turn contain high levels of biodiversity. Tundras cover over 20% of the Earth's surface and make up some of the world's largest biomes. 
These regions are found in the Arctic and experience the coldest, harshest and most brutal conditions. Tundra summer growing season is just 50 to 60 days. And other than this, tundra is snow covered with few plants and animals that are essentially clinging to life. One of the most important aspects of ecology involves the energy flow throughout the organisms in a biome. Trophic levels are stages in which energy is lost through a food web. As little as 10% of energy is transferred at any trophic level. The rest is lost largely through metabolic processes as heat. The following food webs represent the aquatic and land-based food webs for the Arctic tundra. They illustrate the trophic levels starting with producers, which generate energy from the sun using a chemical process called photosynthesis. Primary consumers, usually herbivores, secondary and tertiary consumers, known as carnivores, and quaternary consumers, often referred to as apex predators. In Arctic tundra, symbiotic relationships between animals are vital for survival of the biome. Commensalism is when one species benefits and the other is not harmed or helped. An example of this is the caribou digging up soil and exposing small mammals for the arctic fox to feed on. Parasitism is when one species benefits, the parasite, and the other is harmed, the host. For example, the liver tapeworm feeding on animals like moose and caribou. Mutualism is when both species benefit. In the tundra biome, an example of this is the lichen plant. Algae live within the fungus and provide the lichen plant with sugars and oxygen to live. Competition is when two animals compete for the same resources. For example, herbivores feeding on the same vegetation. Major abiotic factors include ground elevation and poor soil conditions due to permafrost. These lead to poor nutrition for plant growth and limited food for animal species. Biochemical cycles that occur throughout the Arctic tundra are very influential on the stability of the biome. In winter, permafrost is made up of soil, rocks and frozen water. This water is received from the water cycle shown in the following diagram. The carbon cycle occurs when dead plants decompose and carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere and trapped and stored under permafrost. As permafrost melts, CO2 is released into the atmosphere. According to the National Geographic, the increased volumes of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases produced by humans have caused global warming. This in turn is causing glaciers to melt and animals' habitats to be lost. Permafrost also freezes dead animals and their waste under the surface. As the permafrost stores, excess nitrogen is released into the air. Soil bacteria take in the remaining nitrogen forming ammonia and convert it into nitrates and nitrites. Plants assimilate these and animals feed on the plants and the cycle occurs again. Oil spills and fires can also be a problem in tundra regions, disturbing animal species and vegetation. Mining for minerals and vehicle usage also harms tundra soil, affecting plant growth. The tundra is slow to repair itself and doesn't respond well to physical disturbances due to its limited diversity. Biodiversity is essential for a biome to have a sustainable future, although the limited diversity in the tundra biome is extremely vulnerable. Johan Rockstorm states, the value of biodiversity is that it makes our ecosystems more resilient, which is prerequisite for stable societies. With the major impact from humans and low biodiversity, the tundra's future remains in the balance. Biodiversity is the variety of all living organisms on Earth and is broken down into ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. Biodiversity is essential for the balanced function of all living ecosystems as each organism is dependent on one another for survival. An ecosystem is a part of the environment that contains living organisms that interact with each other and the non-living parts of their physical environment. There are many different ecosystems that vary in temperature, rainfall, living organisms, and non-living organisms, such as the savanna, rainforest, tundra, reef, and desert. The savanna is a tropical grassland which can be found in between tropical rainforests and deserts. An important factor in the savanna is the weather. It has warm temperatures year-round, varying from 20 to 30 degrees. Savannas exist in areas where there are 6 to 8 month wet summer season and a 4 to 6 month dry winter season. The annual rainfall is from 25 to 75 centimeters per year. The savanna is characterized by grasses and small dispersed trees that don't form closed canopies, allowing the sun to reach the ground. 
The savanna is able to hold a vast amount of species. The topography causes animal speciation to be very diverse. Predators and prey, or simply known as the predator-prey relationship, are vital to a healthy ecosystem. This is a feeding relationship in which the predator kills and eats the prey. This relationship increases the predator's chance of survival and reproduction. As the prey slowly decreases in numbers, so do the predators as they run out of food to eat. This relationship is also known as a cycle. An example of predator-prey can be a lion as the predator and a wildebeest as the prey. Competition is commonly known in the savannah since there are many living organisms that compete for prey, space or even water. Such as the acacia trees and the stargrass. Both plant life competes for water. There was a study done that if you eliminate the stargrass surrounding the acacia trees, the acacia trees double in their growth rate. The biotic factors of the savannah are the organisms referred to as the producers, consumers, or decomposers. The producers use the sun's energy via photosynthesis to absorb nutrients. Grasses, shrubs, and trees are examples of producers. Producers provide energy for many species, such as insects, fungi, and larger animals. Consumers eat plants or animals to obtain energy for growth and reproduction and are divided into three categories herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores. Decomposers break down organic material to obtain nutrients and include the fungi, insects, algae, and bacteria. The abiotic factors of the savanna are the non living aspects of the ecosystem that the living organisms depend on. These abiotic factors include climate, soil, topography, and natural disturbances. Biogeochemical cycles are essential because they include a variety of biological, geological, and chemical processes. Many elements cycle through ecosystems, organisms, air, water, and soil. The biogeochemical cycles transport and store these living elements so that they can be used by living organisms. The carbon cycle makes a profound influence on ecosystems, with its producers depending on photosynthesis, which converts carbon dioxide into glucose and oxygen. Decomposers such as earthworms break down dead animals to simpler molecules. The dense interconnecting web of biodiversity gives ecosystems the ability and resilience to recover from external change. In cases of natural disasters such as wildfires, they play a key role in shaping the savanna by serving as an agent of renewal and change. The effects of the fire are long-lasting, but with time and no human contact, the ecosystem heals and rebalances. Human impacts such as poaching causes unbalances in the food web. Many of the savanna predators are on the verge of extinction because of poaching. This causes disturbance in the savanna food web, causing an overpopulation of primary and secondary consumers. Biodiversity is essential for the sustainability of the savanna ecosystem, as each organism relies on each other for the survival stability. Without biodiversity, life wouldn't exist as ecosystems would not be able to recover from change. A coral reef is a formation at or near the surface of tropical waters formed by skeletal deposits of corals, a form of sea life, and is possibly one of the most biodiverse ecosystems on the planet. Reefs are formed by tiny organisms called polyps. As these grow and reproduce, they form complex connections and colonies that provide food and shelter for the wide variety of organisms. They are normally found in warm, shallow waters as many producers rely on photosynthesis from the sun. The total area of the world's coral reefs add up to less than 1% of the marine environment, but is home to more than 25% of marine life. The diversity of the reef depends on competition for food, space and sunlight, and the interconnecting relationships. Each element of the coral reef is interconnected to each other, meaning that each organism relies on each other. Natural disasters and other man-made adjustments often occur and impact greatly on the ecosystem, affecting a whole food web. However, these organisms are highly resilient and regain stability easily due to the wide range of biodiversity. If there is an increased population of apex predators, then the lower trophic levels will decrease. But if there is a decreasing population of lower trophic levels, then the apex predators will die due to starvation. Organisms rely on relationships to survive. Some of these are symbiotic relationships. 
An example of this is the relationship between Remora and a tiger shark. The tiger shark provides scraps of food from their prey that the Remora can eat, and in turn, the Remora cleans the shark's skin. Bacteria and fungi are very important as they decompose the dead sources and clean the ecosystem, putting it back into the food web. There are three main types of biodiversity that are genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecological diversity. The importance of biodiversity is crucial for the survival of a species or potentially a whole ecosystem, because without diversity, species are vulnerable to disease and destruction. The combination of different biotic and abiotic factors results in a healthy, balanced ecosystem. Temperature is one of the most important abiotic factors in the coral reef, as many organisms depend on temperature for breeding. Coral reefs usually operate in between temperatures of 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. This results in regulation of chemicals and a clean, hygienic environment. The water cycle is so important in order for the coral reef to exist, but is also partially becoming a disadvantage. It is a big part of filtering and cleaning the water in order for the reef to stay clean and hygienic, and it also carries water to other aquatic ecosystems on Earth that could possibly be going through drought. But, one of the biggest causes of coral bleaching is from runoff and climate change. The poisonous fertilisers from farm crops eventually run off due to rain into the ocean poisoning organisms and putting stress on coral. Coral bleaching occurs when the coral loses its symbiotic algae and is left with its bare organism, which eventually dies, as it cannot live without it. The reef can simply not live without coral, as it is the base of all food webs and is the framework and structure of the coral reef. The importance of biodiversity is crucial for the survival of a species or potentially a whole ecosystem because without diversity the ecosystem is vulnerable to disease and destruction which can lead to extinction and destroy the coral reef. An ecosystem is a community of living organisms, biotic, and their non-living surroundings, abiotic. Communities of species interact with each other, resulting in predation, cooperation, and competition. Ecosystem ecology specifically studies the flow of energy and materials through an ecosystem. All species within that ecosystem are dependent on one another, hence a community. One of the most important things in order for an ecosystem to thrive is biodiversity. If an ecosystem has a large biodiversity, it is not only more productive, but better at naturally sustaining. If a species is threatened by a new disease, it can recover quickly as there will be greater gene diversity. In a less diverse ecosystem, inbreeding may occur among species and cause less diverse and genetically defective offspring which have a greater susceptibility to extinction. Temperate forests are found at higher latitudes than their tropical counterparts and experience cooler temperatures ranging from negative 30 to 30 degrees. Temperatures can be attributed to many large bodies of water often found in close proximity to the forests. In temperate forests there is an average rainfall of 75 to 100 centimetres a year and in temperate rainforests 130 to 500. Fog often contributes to a significant amount of the precipitation and also results in a dark and cooler forest. They experience four distinct seasons with the deciduous trees that make up a large portion of the tree population losing their leaves each autumn and winter. The decaying organic matter, hummus, allows for rich and fertile soil. This with the high moisture content means that the soil is perfect for growth. There are three to four species of tree per square kilometer on average, and common tree species include beech, oak, elm, maple, willow, birch, and hickory. Common animals on the other hand are squirrels, rabbits, deer, birds, wolves, foxes, and bears. The cooler temperatures mean that the temperate forest has less biodiversity than tropical rainforests. This food web shows the flow of energy from one organism to the next. Energy is first received by the producers, or plants, through the sun and the process of photosynthesis, in which plants convert sunlight and CO2 into food. The primary consumers, deer, rodents and insects, then eat these. They are then in turn eaten by secondary, birds, snakes and the like, and tertiary consumers. 
The tertiary consumers then eat them. Ecosystems can change dramatically at the introduction or reintroduction of a species. This, in the case of apex predators, is known as a trophic cascade, and it's a process which starts at the top of the food web and works its way down to the bottom. This happened at Yellowstone National Park in 1995 when wolves were reintroduced due to the deer overpopulation and damage they were causing by overgrazing. They not only affected the deer numbers, but the number of and the species in the ecosystem. Making it more diverse, this impacted the vegetation growth and ultimately the topography of the park for the better. Through deforestation and farming, humans can alter the phosphorus and nitrogen cycle through fertilizers, certain feces and detergents with the help of the water cycle, which can lead to the death of countless species and the detriment of soil and water. They can also hunt species to extinction. Without these ecosystems, there will be increases in temperature, soil erosion, landslides, water pollution, floods, loss of biodiversity, species extinction and an increase in CO2. In order for this ecosystem to be sustainable, we as a race need to slow the rate that we are clearing land, replant trees, cut down on hunting, reduce vehicle emissions and have as many national parks and the like as possible. This will not only aid in preventing global warming and pollution, but provide habitats for the countless species that function within this ecosystem, assisting to maintain its biodiversity and ensuring its stability for future generations. The Great Barrier Reef is part of the world's largest ecosystem. The reef is internationally recognised for its immense diversity of habitats and species, including more than 2,000 900 separate coral reefs and more than 6,000 square kilometres of seabed. The Great Barrier Reef relies on its biodiversity range from animals to algae, plants and microorganisms all working together to in interconnect and survive, making the reef one of the most remarkable and complex ecosystems on earth. Like all ecosystems, the Great Barrier Reef has a general rule, eat or be eaten. Although some plants and microorganisms can generate their own food, in order for all other species to survive, they must eat other organisms. This makes every single organism in the reef a predator, and for most of the species they are also prey, excluding sharks and moray eels. Competition is common in the barrier reef, with most species fighting for space, food and territory. Rivalry between the same species is called intraspecific competition, and rivalries between different species is called interspecific competition. The abiotic factors of the Great Barrier Reef are mostly sunlight, water density and viscosity. These key features contribute to the reef's environment, underscoring the livability of the biotic factors. Sunlight helps with the growth of the plants to keep the food chain healthy. Furthermore, the water density changes as the reef gets deeper, allowing certain animals to live there, and the viscosity of the water contributes to the movement of the fish and other animals. The biotic factors of the Great Barrier Reef are all living plants, animals and coral that live within the reef. Biogeochemical cycles are important as they cycle the elements between compartments. For example, in the water cycle, the water in the lo ocean, lakes and river, formerly known as evaporation, is turned into condensation in the clouds, then comes back down as precipitation or rain and nourishes both plants and trees so they can grow and prosper, which in turn provides oxygen and food for humans and animals. The Great Barrier Reef does not really respond well to external changes. It migrated seaward when the sea level fell, then it went landward when the shelf flooded and the temperature raised. During that time, there were five reef deaths and reef growth was interrupted. The Barrier Reef has also suffered from coral bleaching. Researchers found that 93% of the Great Barrier Reef has suffered from coral bleaching. The Barrier Reef also suffers from humans polluting, coral mining, overfishing and blast fishing. Biodiversity of an ecosystem is critical for its future sustainability because if all animals and plants weren't different from each other, then they would run out of things to eat and live on, because each animal, plant and organism needs a specific animal and plant to live off. Furthermore, biodiversity boosts ecosystem productivity, pursuant to each species that has an important role in keeping their ecosystem alive and healthy. Finally, if an ecosystem is healthy because of the diversity between all living things, it gives the habitat a higher chance of surviving natural disasters such as tsunamis, earthquakes, cyclones, and oil spills.